Why hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Rachel and tonight we are going to be drinking a little glass of wine. We're going to be reading some poetry. We're going to be wearing a very fancy ball gown and nice earrings because this is our third lockdown and really we just need any reason to dress up. And uh, we're going to be looking at some pretty deep and meaningful poetry today. You guys have been asking me for a while to talk about some poetry that I actually like. And today we're going to be discussing a modern day genius. A woman who puts the technical ability of Shakespeare to shame, who puts the emotional rawness and romanticism of Elizabeth Browning to shame, a woman who touches me in so many ways, a woman who I think we will all agree constantly challenges us. Of course, it's obvious I am talking none other than Bella Thorne. But um, kind of some jokes aside, but not all, today we are going to be doing a little bit of a lyric analysis on some of the genius songs released by Bella Thorne. You may have heard the classic Stupid Fucking Bitch recently, which is apparently about Tana Mojo. Apparently a lot of these are. And other soon-to-be classics, such as Bitch I'm Bella Thorne, Pussy Mine, and of course... I'm a hoe too. Now, sadly, not all of these are complete lyrics because not all of the songs have been released yet. Some of them are just kind of teasers from her new album that is soon to be out and I know I'm going to be first in line to buy it. Probably a signed copy on vinyl. Yeah, I think I think we should probably just start with, with the big one, the popular one, stupid fucking bitch, or the polite term, the, the kid-friendly version is SFB, which I think you'll all agree is incredibly catchy. Now for copyright reasons, I'm afraid I can't play you these songs, so I am just gonna have to read these lyrics to you, and I think you will find it far more enjoyable. You're a stupid fucking bitch, but you already know this. And you let me see your tits, but I'm still not over it. You wanted me for clout, and I should have thrown you out but I never resist the way you bite your lower lip. Now, can we just talk about the genius rhyme scheme in this? It, it's wonderful. Bitch, this, tits, it, lip. Weren't expecting that last one, were you? And then Bella just throws it in there, catches you off guard, and you're like, mate, she's serious about this. A throwback to a half rhyme from two lines ago. You never, never quite know what to expect with Bella Thorne, do you? You can say a lot of things about her, but one thing, she's not predictable. Now, I think it's fairly obvious here that she is obviously talking about a woman that she really respects and holds in high regard. She does not at all feel used or like she's used this woman. I think that's very clear. Um, there may be some, ugh, I don't know, homosexual undertones. You know, I'm getting very... Oscar Wilde vibes from this. Th this idea that you let me see your girl bits, but I'm still not over it. I never resist the way you bite your lower lip. One could argue this means she's attracted to this woman, but I, I don't know, that might be a little bit out there. It's, it's subtle, you kind of have to read between the lines a bit to kind of get that idea, but I think at this point we're kind of starting to get an idea of who Bella Thorne is and who she's writing about. On to the chorus. All my friends think you're a bitch. They wish I was over it. Again, bringing that rhyme of bitch and it back. Um, some people say, you know, you might want to be unique in your chorus. You might want a catchy hook. Some people might say you don't want to use the same rhymes as you used in the verse. But this is Bella Thorne. She can do what she wants. Should have left you in a ditch, but I'm not over it. That's right. I'm not over it because I'm a super fucking bitch. I'm a super fucking bitch. Bitch, 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 bitch. And then the hook is, I admit it, I'm a super fucking bitch because I let you run your mouth before I even run this shit. Should have been done. So obviously we can see here that Bella is in her genius ways. Um, she's taking that first line of you're a stupid fucking bitch and now turning it on its head to say that she is a super fucking bitch. Stupid, super, I did not see that coming. She's saying, look, we're similar. People think we're alike on the surface, but deep down, there's something very, very different between us. You're stupid, and I'm super. 
did not see that coming. She goes on to say, Should have hit it and quit it, but I let you check in for extended visits. Should have been done. Should have hit it and quit it. Don't you know I run this town? Now you're making me lit it. I burned it down. And all the bridges in it. Let me break it down. Let me get specific. I burned it down. Let me get specific. You might be slick, but I'm the slickest. You copy my shit, yeah, you tried to mimic. Let me keep going, cause I ain't finished. And now at this point, I know what you're thinking. We all wish she was finished, but she's Bella Thorne, so she's not. Now, I think this um, verse here actually makes a really strong feminist statement because often we get male rappers rapping about how they want to hit it and quit it. Um, but in this case, Bella is like, no, I am the man here. I will hit it and quit. Oh, well, I didn't hit it and quit it, but I should have hit it and quit it. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Um, therefore, she is assuming the role of the patriarchy in this relationship. And she is saying, I am going to systematically keep you down, keep you in your place, Tana. You girl, you. So something, something, something feminist. I also want to take a moment to point out the actual absolute genius of taking slang terms and colloquial language and terms which make her seem really down with the kids like lit and playing around with it, making some kind of pun. Yes, she's really lit because she's cool, but also she's really lit because she burned it down. What did she burn down? All the bridges in it. What happens when you burn bridges? It means you're tearing up a friendship or a relationship and throwing it out. The layers of meaning in this is genius. I just, I can't. I'm overwhelmed by the talent on display here. Uh, we're gonna move on now to another song, which I've also heard is about Tana, but I can't say for sure, you know, none of us are there. Poetry is subjective. Maybe you guys will hear these lyrics and you'll take something from it yourself. You'll apply your own interpretation. Maybe you'll think of someone in your life um, and not just about Bella and Tana. But either way, there's a lot to this song. It's probably one of her deeper ones. And again, I really want you to read between the lines with this and start to try and understand where Bella was coming from. What was her motivation for writing this? What is she really trying to convey that's more than just the surface level? Oh, her, oh, her, oh, her, oh. Mm, her, oh. It's me. Straight up, we have this incredibly deep introduction where Bella doesn't even feel the need to say her name because she just assumes we know who she is. She's Bella Thorne. So all she has to say is, oh, it's me. There aren't even enough words in the language to explain how wonderful Bella Thorne is. And even if there were, she doesn't need them because we already know it's me. Oh, I love the way she say that pussy mine, pussy mine. Oh, I worked that pussy out like nine to five, nine to five. Oh, can't get that pussy off my mind, of my mind. Oh, hit it from the front, then I hit that pussy from behind. Oh yeah, pussy, pussy, twist your leg. Oh yeah, break it, break it, break your neck. Oh yeah, I'm a dog wolf, what do you expect? Oh, I'ma make you sweat. Oh, I'ma wreck myself. Oh God, what's that? Got your feet up by your neck. Genius. Listen to the way she juxtaposes pussy with I'm a dog. Contrasting animals, but both metaphors. And the way she says I'm a dog, woof. The onomatopoeia here, the woof. She could have just said I'm a dog, but she didn't. She added in that woof for real emphasis to really kind of hammer it home that her id is in control here, you know? There's, there's some pretty Freudian elements in this if you want that kind of reading. But um, yeah, her id is definitely in control. She's kind of animalistic right now. She's like just going with her urges and she's saying, I'm a dog, I'm a beast, I'm a predator, I'm a wild animal. Woof, there's so much in this. And then comparing the vagina to essentially this animal's prey something that this animal chases after and will tear and rip apart. The graphic imagery there. 
Some deep stuff here. Some deep stuff. She goes on to say, never break up, but I fuck you like it's makeup sex. You can run and tell all your friends, my dick, the best. Again, the feminist undertones, because Bella Thorne doesn't even have a penis. She is taking this metaphorical penis and saying, I have one, to say, I'm in control in this relationship. She's being a strong, independent woman who's saying, I don't need no man, I got my own penis. Like a waterfall, the way I keep my pussy wet, wet, keep the pussy wet, keep the pussy wet, 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 wet. Ha 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 ha, fuck your ex, oh yeah, run the track, ice cream paint job on your chest, oh yeah, don't take your test, we gonna have a fuck fest, oh. Why am I doing this? So I think what we can all take away from this is that clearly WAP copied Bella Thorne, obviously. Bella was the original to do this. She was the creative mind behind talking about how wet her vagina is in a overtly graphic way. We could say she is a groundbreaker. Um, we could say a lot of things about Bella Thorne. <laughs> We'll go with Groundbreaker. <laughs> I don't, actually, you know, I don't even know which one came out first and it doesn't really matter, does it? Because, oh my God. This just gets even more graphic. So let's move on a little bit. Next, I want to look at one of her songs, which continues that theme that we saw in the beginning of that last song, where she only needed I Me to introduce herself because we all know she's Bella Thorne and we all know she's something special. Now, on Genius.com, there is actually a little about section for this song, which I think shows how deep it is. Apparently, the title and hook are a reference to Madonna's 2015 single, Bitch, I'm Madonna. Both songs aim to make light of the status and reputation of the singer, as well as being explicit for shock value. Bitch, I'm Bella Thorne is the first song that she recorded into back into sing, that, that's not English, and was started as a joke. You could not tell, you could not tell at all. Bella's boyfriend, Maud Sun, <laughs> not anymore mate, got a beat for that joke and they recorded it. You, you cannot tell this started as a joke um, because the subtext in this, amazing. Are you ready? You need to work more, bitch. So already I'm seeing allusions and references here to Britney Spears with the you gotta work, bitch. Bitch, bitch I'm Bella Thorne, allusion to Madonna. She's taking all the female pop icons here and bringing them together, genius. What, damn, bitch I'm Bella Thorne. This is my shit, bitch, I'm Bella Thorne. I don't need no ID, cause I'm Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. Seen me on TV a million times before. Times before. Been inside the club since I was hella short. Hella short. Now my money talk, that shit you can't afford. Can't afford. So obviously she's coming straight up here and saying, I have status, I'm someone special, and I have been since I was short. Not since I was young, just when I was a bit shorter. I just keep growing all the time, it's what happens. The genius and originality as well of using um, money as a kind of metaphor for her status, saying, now my money talk. Because she's saying, one, yes, I do have money. And two, my money gives me status. But also three, my money is a symbol for my status. Because without my status, I wouldn't have money. And without my money, I wouldn't have my status. So, cyclical. Genius, I love it. I don't got a license, but I got a Porsche, got a Porsche. Yeah, I got some drivers that open my door, open my door. Here, oh, I love it. There's so much we can interpret from this and we don't know. Does she not got a license because it was revoked because she did something illegal because she's a total mad lad? Or does she not have a license just because she didn't want one, because she doesn't need one, because she has drivers, because bitch, she's Bella Thorne. Or does she not have a license because she doesn't want one but she still drives because she's a rebel? Like I say, going back to that first interpretation of Bella Thorne is a mad lad. 
Pussy Scuba Diver need a surfboard? Which clearly shows that she thinks of sex as a competitive sport, so that's something. Let me show my nipples what I need a shirt for, which I think we can all agree is something everyone wants to hear from a former Disney star whose audience was and probably still is predominantly children. <laughs> Bitch, you need to learn more. I'm only 20 and a queen. By the time I'm 23, I'll probably be the king. So one may look at this and think this is Bella bragging, this is Bella showing off, Bella saying I'm great, I'm great, but actually this is Bella being incredibly self-aware and showing evidence of the Dunning-Kruger effect. She thinks she's only 20 now and she's great, but she's kind of at that low point on the, you know the Dunning-Kruger effect where the, the kind of, um, the more you learn, the more you think you know, and then as you learn more, you actually go, oh wait, I know nothing, I know nothing at all. Bella's showing that, she's saying, I'm at this low point now, I'm 20, I think I know a lot, even though I barely know anything, by the time I'm 23, I'm gonna think I know everything, even though I don't. And then what she didn't include in this is the part when she hits her 30s and realized, God, I was an idiot, and so on. So I like that she didn't include that last bit because, you know, she still wants to show her brand that she's a stupid, f no, no, she's not a stupid fucking, she's a super fucking bitch, damn it. <laughs> Where's this joke going? I don't know, let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> oh my God. I, you know, I am, I, I can't take this seriously anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, it's all that I I don't I don't really want to read any more of these lyrics out either. <laughs> I don't know how I kept a straight face for so much of this. <laughs> oh my God, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. I. Uh, why is this a thing? Why does music like this get made? And worse, why does music like this get millions of views? It's ridiculous to me. Millions of listens and streams when it's awful, genuinely awful. And this is something that like, while I joke about it in this video and stuff, actually kind of upsets me a little bit on a slightly personal level because a lot of my friends are musicians and they are incredibly, incredibly talented people. Um, and I say this not just from a biased they're my friends perspective, but from a like genuinely, oh my God, where did they get this much talent kind of thing from? And it makes me sad when I see that they have songs that only have like a few thousand plays or something like that. And I'm like, I know the time and effort and years and years and years and years and years of training and hard work that went into creating that and went into getting to that skill level. And it doesn't really pay off for them in the same way as someone like Bella Thorne coming along and spending 10 minutes in the studio going, bitch, I'm Bella Thorne, blah, 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 my vagina. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And so that does kind of upset me that Bella's probably making a lot of money off this crap when genuinely talented musicians aren't. Yeah. So that's, I guess, why I just want to end this with a little bit of shameless uh, promotion of some of my friends. I do have a little Spotify playlist of music made by my friends, which is m music made by my friends. I, I don't know how I can explain that better. Um, but it would be great if you want to check it out. It's um, down in the description, it's linked down in the description below of this video. And um, they're wonderfully talented, amazing people who, like I say, are not only talented musicians, but wonderful people as well and definitely deserve a lot of love and support. And um, yeah, I guess that's where I'm going to end this. Thanks for letting me be weird today. I don't, I don't know why I wanted to do this video like this, but there we go. Oh, I've not even drank my wine. I feel like I really need it after that. You know me as well. I'm not really a swearer, so that was slightly uncomfortable for me, that. <laughs> so yeah, reading those lyrics was slightly uncomfortable for me, I'll be honest. But anyway, um, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, it would be great if you were to subscribe. I'm very close to 200,000 subscribers now, and it would be great to hit that soon. Um, but for now, thank you for watching. Let me know how you interpreted Bella Thorne's lyrics down in the comments below. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Um, and I'll see you again very soon. Oh, God, give me more wine. <laughs>
Oh my god. Kirby Bear, if I ever catch you rapping like this, you'll be in trouble, lady.